Hello traders, this is Rich Dare from TradeSite with the uh, market preview for Wednesday, January 30th. This past session was uh, was fairly strong with uh, strength uh, returning once again to the ES side over the NASDAQ side. Today we had uh, the ES futures up by eight handles on the day with about a half a percent gain, finally taking out and closing above that key 1500 level. At the same time we had kind of a kind of a lackluster performance by the NASDAQ uh, on the heels of some uh, somewhat disappointing earnings results and that uh, in the NASDAQ side of the futures trade really uh, lagged only up five handles on the day. The Dow punched out uh, to a decent new highs 1390, 13, 13,954 getting close to that 14,000 level for whatever that's worth and uh, basically mirroring the uh, performance of the uh, broad market represented by the S&P futures. Uh, the intermarkets, you know, were, were pretty decent on the day, but not not anything uh, too extraordinary. Uh, I think today's focus was really on on the equity side rather than anything else. Uh, with uh, a lot of the uh, a lot of the big caps and a lot of the uh, dividend paying paying names uh, performing very very well. So let's move on and take a look at the, uh, the ES and the NQ charts. All right, so here's a look at the NQ futures. Uh, I'm sorry, the ES futures, and uh, you can see that we finally pushed above this uh, eight ace level at that 1500, 1500 mark. The uh, price action has been pretty decent. It's been uh, about 45 degrees to the upside, with a, just a very, very slight acceleration recently. We're starting to get a little bit of distance above the 10 EM, EMA, but not not anything terminal. Just wanted to point out that we are now eight bars up in the seeker setup. And uh, tomorrow we would be nine bars up, and and that would be an area where we could find some uh, resistance, where the chart would either need to start to consolidate laterally, or to have some kind of a downward retracement. So we'll have to keep an eye on this. Also of note that we are now above the eight ace level, so technically we are uh, for the first time on this chart overbought and into the uh, upper fringes of the GAN box here and uh, approaching the plus one ace overbought level. And the NQ futures, as we had intimated earlier, continue to lag. Uh, they're still basically in that same trading range, and they're still within, essentially, that, that opening range of the year. So there's really been no progress, and this is going to be a, a problem uh, long term for the S&P. Uh, so if the S&P is really going to be able to take out those overbought levels, knock out the plus one ace level on the GAN box, knock out two ways, and maybe even frame shift to the upside, we're going to have to see some better performance from NASDAQ, otherwise this is going to be uh, really a reversal setup in the, uh, in the S&P side, which is probably what's going to happen, but it's, a, it's still a bit too early to tell. Now in the multi-sector multi daily chart, we saw a little bit of a better performance out of the XAU. We got a little bump off of this uh, oversold condition here. The uh, Banks and the uh, the biotechs were definitely stronger. The uh, SOX was a real sore spot on the day uh, and was one of the weaker performance, performers and definitely one of the weaker stocks on NASDAQ today. In, internally, the market uh, still remains fairly neutral. We don't really have any, any real overbought conditions or uh, really really popping up in any, any discernible way here. Here's the put call ratio. Put call ratio right now is, is still fairly benign. Got a little bit of a downward bias. Have to see if this continues lower and can record one of these climactic overbought readings that we haven't seen yet. So we're going to monitor this, but there's nothing there yet. Here's a look at the 10-day trend. The 10-day trend still has some uh, some room to the uh, to the upside here before we get to that 0 0.85 overbought threshold. We uh, broke below the uh, 1.00 level, so we're in the bottom third of the of the typical trading band. But there's still plenty of plenty of room here in the tank uh, to push higher before we get that uh, over overbought reading. And keep in mind that uh, as you t tend to make that move towards uh, that overbought level, price in the in the broad market tends to accelerate. So that could that could still be uh, a potential. So plenty of room in the tank here. Don't have anything, anything flashing a warning signal from the 10-day trend or the put call index. Okay, now back to our we our weekly ratio chart of the S and P SPX versus the TLT. So th this is the the broad market equities versus the defensive minded TLT. So what you want to see is you want to see a ratio that's on the rise here in a bullish environment for stocks. We've seen that. 
we've broken out above this prior reference point here set in uh, in uh, the very end of the first quarter of 2012. So, you know, we're definitely making new highs here and have developed this uh, pretty decent upward bias here. So this is definitely something we're going to be keeping an eye on, but uh, so far, so good. Well, so far, so good for the previous previous uh, look at, at, at risk being assumed in the, in the broad market. But the problem with the market right now is that the NDX just continues to drag and is, is, is underperforming the broad market, the SPX. Ratio chart made a new low on the move, which is which is bearish and really is not confirming this new high and this break above 1500. Uh, this implies that that while we have had this break above 1500, it's probably going to be able to do something, maybe build on it a bit because our internals are not overcooked yet. But the ratio chart that we're looking at now, the SPX NDX, is is not what you want to see. You want to see at least a relative performance of 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 kind of of kind of just neutral, but this is actually you know, just showing a rotation out of the NDX uh, higher beta stocks into into the broad market stocks to push it higher. So this is definitely an ongoing cause for concern. And until we until we see a reversal in this, this makes the breakout in the equity suspect and more of a rental rather than a long term uh, juncture at this at this moment. Okay, folks. Now, here's something we haven't looked at before in uh, in the market preview. And this is something that's really a longer longer term metric, something that really kind of gauges the market uh, in the very in the very largest terms. This is a weekly chart of the cumulative advanced decline. And what we want to look at here is is to find out really what the market is doing internally. On the on the upper upper chart here, we've got a cumulative advanced decline of the New York Stock Exchange. So this is the net advances minus declines on a cumulative basis on the NYSE. And we're we're just now breaking out. If you can see my line here, just breaking out to new highs. So this is consistent with the breakout in the broad market. So there's no divergence here, which is fine. But what we're going to do is we're going to monitor this going forward because the cumulative advanced decline line tends to lead price. When the, when the advanced decline line bottoms, it usually bottoms before the bottom of a move in the market. And on the top, it tends to lead the turn down in the market. And actually at the top, it tends to lead by a little bit more than at the bottom, which is something we, a little detail we can talk about at some future time. But for now, what we want to do is we want to make sure that this line continues pointing higher, it does not start to roll over. If this starts to, if this does start to to roll over, we're going to be looking at technical technical levels to start exiting long-term positions. Don't have it yet, but this is definitely something that we're going to be looking at. In the bottom half of the window here is the cumulative advanced decline for the Nasdaq. Now, the Nasdaq's been relatively weak. We double topped here. We did not break out to new highs. We've got you know a little bit of a constructive turn up here, but for the most part, we're still we're still negative here and have not been able to keep consistent with the broad market. So this is consistent with NASDAQ underperforming the broad market. And so what we want to do is we really want to make our focus here, not on the NASDAQ side, but on the broad market side to see if there's some kind of a roll over here. Now, a week, just a little bit less than a week ago, we saw that climactic reading of 50 plus percent bulls in the AAII sentiment survey. We're going to get another look at that survey in a couple of days, and we're going to want to see if, if that uh, continues to print that bullish sentiment. Okay. Well, that bullish sentiment may be printing. If we start to see a rollover in the advanced decline, that'll be another indication that we're, we're reaching an important top in the market. We're not doing it yet, but this is definitely something that we're going to be monitoring. All right, folks, looking at the uh, actual sectors, the strongest sector on the day for the... Uh, for the New York side was the XOI, which was uh, very, very strong on the day, up uh, 2.7%, making a uh, a real push to the highs here. Just wanted to point out that we're getting very long in the tooth here in the uh, secret exhaustion, and we're uh, now 11 days up into the count. Uh, the next strong sector that se sector that we really like to follow is the uh, is the XAU. The XAU was uh, was higher by about 1.6%. And the XAU is is uh, you know the, the index that the GDX follows. And just keep in mind here that, G, that the GDX did uh, record the 13 exhaustion. 
So break over uh, yesterday's high uh, would be a technical long entry for a play back up to that zero ace uh, slash 10 EMA level. Next strong sector on the day was the uh, was OSX, uh, much like the XOI, influenced by the energy prices and really uh, started to push up finally towards that 8 ace level at 250. We've broken out decently above the uh, prior high and have a couple days closing above it. Uh, we're nine bars up in the secret count, which is which is the setup phase, which is done. Now we're starting to count down here, so keep an eye on how this countdown progresses. Uh, next sector we want to look at is going to be the BKX. The BKX is uh, in overbought territory, but uh, but really starting to level off. Uh, really was essentially flat on the day and is starting to uh, feel the effects of being in the overbought territory on the GAN box here. We're definitely seeing some rotation out of the uh, the former leaders and into these later cycle plays like the uh, XOI and the and the transport. So definitely continue to uh, to look at those sectors carefully for breakouts and continuations. BTK today uh, was uh, really just going nowhere fast. But uh, again, just just hovering below that two ace level, that plus two ace level on the on the GAN box, and threatening for a frame shift to the upside. The trend remains positive above all three major moving averages, and also above even the near term near term 10 EMA. The semiconductors were uh, were uh, really f relatively weak on the day, uh, down uh, about seven tenths of a percent. Uh, it's into the overbought area on the uh, on the GAN box. And uh, even though we're, we're breaking out to new highs here, they, they've still been under underperforming the market overall. And I uh, really have to be monitored closely for a rollover and a break below the 10 EMA here. Now, the weakest sector on the day was the hardware index, uh, HWI. Uh, big gap down, and uh, we closed below the uh, 10 EMA here, so we have to be careful that we're not in the midst of uh, some kind of a meaningful turn here. Also note with the hardware index, this is um, IBM and Dell and whatnot. We're also below uh, this double top area here, and in fact, we've got a kind of a breakaway gap in this little island up here uh, at the double top area. So definitely something to be aware of. Uh, the MACD has has not not yet really crossed over. It's threatening to, threatening to do so. So keep a, keep an eye on that as well. Here's like the gold futures. The gold futures continue to kind of hover around that prior low here, trying to uh, potentially turn back higher here, but uh, it's still negative because we remain below all the major moving averages, the 50, the 10, and the 200. Oil futures today broke out above the uh, recent consolidation range, starting to move a little bit higher here. Definitely keep an eye on this 8 ace level. It really appears, like we've been talking about, that this is where this is headed. And I think you have to keep an eye on this, as well as the associated stocks, for continuation plays and breakout plays until we get up to that uh, 100 level in the oil futures. Well, that's going to be it for tonight. Uh, and again, this is Rich Dare from TradeSite. And uh, as always, please feel free to leave some comments below. We welcome to hear what you think uh, about what we're presenting you. And uh, we hope to see you again soon.